Your name might be on the title. It might be parked in your garage. But I'm the owner because I'm the king of the islands. Today we're going to talk about tires and unravel the mystery of all the writing that's on those tires that you're buying. Now these tires for Miatas are the most critical thing. It's like shoes on a basketball court. If you put your dance shoes on, get on the basketball court, you're not going to play good basketball. So if you don't put the right tires on your Miata, you're not going to have the kind of car that the engineers and Mazda wanted you to have. So today we're going to talk about tires, and we're going to unravel the mystery of the writing on the tires, and we're going to show you how if you change rims, how to figure out your tire size. The first thing you see on a tire, the major writing, is right here. You can see that the tire is going to have a particular size on it. This tire, which is a common Mazda Miata tire, is a P185 60R14. Over here they have an 87S, and this is actually a load rating and a speed rating. The tire is going to actually have a tire name and the manufacturer. So the manufacturer of the tire might be Bridgestone, and the tire name might be a Potenza. So when we look at the tire dimensions at 185-60R14, this is how it breaks down. The 185 is actually the width of the tire in millimeters. The actual width of the tire in millimeters. The 60 indicates the aspect ratio of the tire. The aspect ratio is the percent of width that is the height. So the aspect ratio of this tire is 185 millimeters times 60 percent, which equals 111 millimeters. So this tire is 111 millimeters tall. The 14 indicates actually the rim size or the opening, the opening of the tire itself. So when you look at a rim, if you measure a rim, and you go from edge to edge, you can see that the, it's actually more than 14 inches. This is a 14 inch rim. But it's actually more. This rim actually from edge to edge is about 15 and a half. The tire itself rides on the inside the bead of the, of the rim here, and it's only 14 inches. Now here's the question. How tall are my tires? Now that's real important for Miata owners. Because one other thing, you have to have your car actually look right also. So if you put out too small a tire, the tire looks funny in the wheel. If you put out too big a tire, the tire looks funny, funny in the wheel. It just doesn't look right. So we can figure out how tall are my tires, this figuring right here. So you have a 185 60R14, okay? We know that the rim itself, diameter of the rim, is 14 inches. We know the tire height of a 60 percent of 185 is 111. So 185 times 60 is 111 times 2, because you're going to have the 2 times, times 2 is 222 millimeters. It's on that 14 inch rim, which is 355.6 millimeters, 14 inches. So then you do the addition, 222 millimeters plus 355.6 millimeters equals your tire height of 577.6 millimeters or 22.74 inches. So let's say you're going to change your rim. You're going to now, you're going to use a 15 inch rim. So you're going to actually use a, a tire that has a uh, a smaller aspect ratio or a smaller percentage of the width to create the same height of tires. Now height of tires becomes very critical on the modern cars. You can change a modern car, a passenger car, about 5% without affecting the computer. When you go bigger than that, the computer itself senses that the, the speedometer is off 
because it's going to drive the speedometer off. And if the speedometer is off more than about 5% on the modern passenger car, it will make the computer rethink what's going on when it's going down the highway. So if you're on the cruising on the highway about 60 miles an hour and you have like big 20 inch or 19, 22 inch tires on your passenger car, the computer itself is actually going to have to rethink what's going on because it's trying to regulate fuel to how many times the tire is going around. So you'll get a glitch in it. So every, oh, say let's quarter mile, the car is going to go like this. Now, the newer cars, you can flash the computers and actually change for the tires. Now, off-road vehicles, they allow more room inside their computers, so you can change that, that ratio, the height ratio, as much as 10 to 15 percent. Another important part of tires is load capacity. Load capacity is, de is determined by three things. A, the size of the air gap between the tire and the wheel. So how much air is in that bladder of, of rubber that you're riding on? So we're actually riding on bladders of air. The tires are bladders of air. So the size of that bladder of air determines how much load can be put on the, on the tire. B would be actually the strength of the tire. How strong is this tire? C is the amount of air pressure in the tire. Air gap. Air gap is the rim is here, the bottom of the tire. So how much air between the rim and the bottom of the tire? Taller tires have an have a ability to have a larger uh, load capacity. The low profile tires have a, don't have the capacity because of the, the distance between the rim and the bottom of the tire. Strength of the tire. The stronger the sidewalls. You've seen on a truck tire, it has might be a what, eight or ten ply. So those plies are in the tires, and that supports the strength of the tires. Uh, run flats have a lot of side, actually have stronger sidewalls to carry the tire if there's not enough air in it. Weaker sidewalls wouldn't be able to carry as much. And remember, the stronger the sidewalls, the more plies there are in the tire, like the run flats, the heavier the tire is going to be. Now, one of the key things about the Mazda Miata is that rotational weight, that wheel and tire combo out there going round and round. Matter of fact, when the, man, the, the engineers first produced the Mazda Miata, they realized that with their the setup they had, that the vehicle had a, a shake, an inherent shake at 65 miles an hour. And as time went on, they realized what they needed to do was make, create some lightweight rims, which they did with Anki, and they asked Pirelli to make some lightweight tires for them. So that's how they solved the, the 65 mile an hour shake on the first production Mazda Miatas. As time went on and the wheels and tires got heavier and heavier, they started to brace the car. Now, what guys have done with the newer cars, they get away from the 16-inch wheels and tires, and they go to 15-inch. 15 by 7 is the optimum rim, rim width with some nice lightweight tires. And that really corrects the car and makes it, eliminates that shimmy, that 65 mile an hour shimmy, and makes the car handle just right. Amount of pressure. And that's something that we can regulate. The other two items we buy, but this we can re regulate. An underinflated tire tends to wear out the tire on the edges because the center bows up, doesn't catch the pavement, so the edges get worn out. An overinflated tire rides on just the center of the tire and wears the center of the tire out. Now, underinflated tires will cause the tire to overheat. What happens is the wrinkle in the sidewall will create and actually blister, overheat the tire, and the tire will blow out on the side. We can take a look at a, a tire that's underinflated right here. This tire here was underinflated, and you can see that it still has tread in the center of the tire, but no tread on the outside edge. Now this tire was actually got so hot 
that it blistered the edge. If you can see how this has gotten so hot that the, the rubber has blistered from overheating. Sometimes when a tire like this comes into the shop low and we fill it up with air, it will actually burst the tire because the sidewall is so weakened that the tire itself is ruined. So if you have a low tire and you fill it up with air, and you can see that the sidewall has blistered, overheated and blistered the rubber, that tire is no good. That's an unsafe tire.